guys, it's Leandra. I am so sorry that I haven't filmed a video in so long, it's so embarrassing, but I'm back. And this is about a book that I have been anticipating for so long, that is The Liar, The Witch, and The Wormhole by Jana Gobertson. This is going to be a spoiler-free review. I'm just going to talk about how much I love this book, what I really liked about this book. The Liar, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is the fourth book in the Chrysanthemum Night series, so this is the first book. And before I get into my opinions and thoughts about the fourth book, I am going to give you guys a few reasons why I think that you guys should read this book series. Reason number one is this series has an amazing, strong, independent female protagonist. Basically, for those of you guys who don't know the Chrysanthemum series, this series is about a girl called Chrysanthemum, who is the daughter of Cinderella. In the world, basically every single fairy tale character that you know is actually real and has lived through their story. Chrysanthemum basically has to attend this boarding school called Lady Agnew's School for Princesses and Other Female Protagonists. Basically, a school is considered a place where the children of very famous fairy tale characters have to go, and they kind of have to like learn the way they're supposed to become a protagonist. They themselves are going to have their own story someday. It doesn't sound so bad, right? Like you think, wow, like a, a school for fairy tale characters, like that's so awesome. But actually, it's really not because really in this world, girls and boys are very stereotyped. So girls are supposed to be, you know, damsels in distress, and they're supposed to be like super feminine and like girly and Basically, Chrysanthemum is like the total opposite of that. She wants to be independent. She definitely wants to be like a princess. She definitely wants to learn how to be a good ruler and to be a good princess and to, you know, like rule over her people. But she also just doesn't want to get stuck into that sort of stereotypical feminine girly role, which I mean, we can all sort of understand. And it's basically just about her journey finding out who she is, you know, trying to break out of that mold that people are putting her in. Because basically in this world, fairy tale characters get this thing called a prologue prophecy, which is something that is written by this ominous person who no one knows who it is, but they call her the author or her him, the author. And basically once your prophecy has been set, you are supposed to follow that storyline. You're supposed to become what it's telling you. And there's not a lot of room for growth. And I think that this book series really, really discovers this aspect of life really well. It is an awesome series, and I would highly recommend you guys read the books. Currently, there are four books. There is Protagonist Bound, book number one. The Severance Game, book number two. Inherent Fate, book number three. And the book that I'm gonna be talking about today, The Liar, The Witch, and The Wormhole. Another thing that I just absolutely love about the series is obviously the way that Jana has sort of molded together like fairy tale characters, but there's also this sort of realness to the world. They go out and watch sport games, they eat hot dogs. Although there's a lot of fairy tale elements to it, she has made this fairy tale world to just be something that we can really, really relate to. And I think that that's just something that's really, really awesome because I am a huge fan of fairy tale adaptations. I love fairy tales. Once Upon a Time is definitely one of my all time favorite series, but there just isn't that sort of realism to it that I just really appreciate about the series. And obviously fairy tale retellings with a strong female character that is trying to break stereotypes and break out of the role that has been given to her is just such an awesome concept. And although we have a lot of books that are coming to the market that sort of, you know, like explore that area, I still think that generally the book culture <laughs> just is lacking female protagonists and I think that this series is really really good at offering that. I absolutely loved The Liar, the Witch, and the Wormhole. It is a huge huge book so it took me about like three weeks to get through it. Like I mean I'm sorry like I don't have so much time to read but I enjoyed every single page, chapter, word. I don't think that there's another way to say that I just loved every single moment that I was reading this book. I was already so 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 impressed by how Jana managed to finish off in Here in Fate, leaving all of the readers like just, just not understanding what's going on. Like it was so intense. But this book like just really, really, really blew me away. There wasn't a single moment that I was bored. There wasn't any chapters where I was like, uh, oh, you know, I kind of wish the scene would end. It was so gratifyingly great. And I am absolutely super, super pumped for book number five. One of the things that I absolutely loved about The Liar, the Witch, and the Wormhole was just how relatable Chrysanta is. She's such a down-to-earth character, but more than anything, she's also incredibly flawed. She is most definitely not one of those overused kind of perfect 
archetype female protagonist like oh I'm so pretty like no one knows I'm so pretty but I'm so gorgeous and every boy loves me and like Chrysanthemum is absolutely nothing like that she is flawed she is human through and through but what I also just love about this book is how much she learns from her mistakes like I think that this is something that this series just really really brings to the table at, at, at least I don't know if you guys have experienced this right but I have books sometimes where I read the book and I'm like oh I don't really like this main character like the main character is so annoying but you also never really see them develop like the reason why main characters who are annoying are just so annoying is because they never learn from their mistakes and I really just feel like the Chrysanthemum series completely sets that on its head. Like, Chrysanthemum makes mistakes. She is human, just like any of us. She mistrusts her friends. She sometimes goes off and does things by herself when actually she should have relied on her friends. So this book series is so much about exploring yeah, the kind of imperfections that each and every human being has, but also about learning from them, character development, character growth, and most of all self-discovery, which is just such an important topic and is also just so important in our time and age. And also for people who are like, yeah, like in their teens, also in their early 20s or something like me, I think it's such a helpful book to sort of self-reflect. Because when you're reading a book, you're essentially becoming that character for the time that you're reading it. And if a character doesn't really have that much character development, like you might just have pure entertainment from reading that book, but you're not really gonna learn something from it. But I especially feel like the fourth book in the series really, really does kind of make you grow as well, which I really, really, really loved. Something else that I just really loved about this book was the emphasis on friendship. I think that a lot of books these days, while I absolutely love romance, like don't get me wrong, I think that so many books are focused on finding the love of your life, like crushing on someone. I think that this book just offers healthy perspectives on male female non-sexual relationships. I think that this is something that's so lacking in our culture. Sexual relations between men and women are just so overdone. It's hard to find books that like show pure, good, struggling, trustworthy friendships and I think that the series like just really really brings that to the table. And the plot of the book was just so so great like there were so many twists and turns there was betrayal which i'm not going to talk about but it definitely relates to that to the liar in the liar the witch in the wormhole mm. Mm. oh my god oh my god like i i was so shocked i i can't like please go read it i there are just no words for how i felt when i was reading the series it was just mm. Not good, not good. And what I also really liked about this book was that you got to see Chrysanta's home. A lot of the series take place like outside of the school, in the school while they're adventuring and um, doing things that they aren't supposed to be doing, Chrysanta and her friends. And I really just feel like this book was really cool because it was more grounded. You got to go visit Midvale and see Chrysanta's parents and see her siblings and see where she lived and see where she grew up and stuff. And I think that that was just something that was really great. Again, like adds to that sort of fairy tale realism thing that I was talking about. I think that's just really fabulous. I can't say more about the series without spoiling you guys, but I do really just want to leave you guys with the message of like, just pick the series up. It is an amazing book series. I will leave all the links down below so you guys can go check it out. I will also leave the official Chrysanta tonight website down below if you guys want to go check that out. I think that's all I can say about it. I don't want to spoil anyone about something so I'm not going to say anything else but just pick it up. It is an amazing book series. You won't regret it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like this video please give it a like and please subscribe if you're new here. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys with another video soon. Bye!